I this sentence. Today we are going to talk about NPU accelerator from analog devices. Max 7830. This is a rather old model. It's already four years old. Uh, and I got it basically by accident. At Embedded World, check my video about it, uh, after I asked a lot of questions about this device, uh, analog devices give me this one for free as evaluation kit package. So why not to check this? And I have never used it until now. Mm, and I will never use it in the future, as you can get from the next video. So uh, let's st or start by talking about positioning of this device. What is the price? This development kit cost 50 USD. Uh, one chip uh, without all the infrastructure around cost around 20 USD. But if you will buy it as a party of 1000 chips, uh, also without any surrounding infrastructure, the price will be 10 USD. Okay, let's check what we have nowadays for the same price. And there was already three boards on my channel. It's of course Milk V, Luck Fox Rock Chip, and the rock chip uh, 3668. Uh, here is like all these videos. And as you can see, in terms of price, they are pretty compatible. And all this board, they already have all this infrastructure. So it's not 10 USD for just a chip. And mm, it's pretty compatible. Mm. And let's look not only on the price, but on other parameters of all these boards. So, for example, memory. Or let's check network limitations for this one board. And it's super strict. And it's clear that no serious network can be launched here. Of course, like some super simple face detection, maybe face recognition, but super, super simple and super rough. Uh, maybe like simplest classificators, super simplest detectors. And uh, speaking of capability of this board is super weak. What are the pros of this board? And actually, there is only single one. It's, of course, uh, energy consumption. And speaking of the energy consumption, this board is killing all this milk five, like fox, rock chips. But when we look in this territory, there are a lot of different competitors. Gap nine, gap eight, gap nine, and here is the big list of different boards. I didn't go super deep into these boards. And the main problem with these boards, they are primarily voice oriented, not image oriented. Because of the small memory size, uh, memory size and of course pretty slow speed for most of them. Yes, you can run computer vision here, but the quality of the network will be mediocrete. Uh, network Upgrading will be difficult because of all this compilation infrastructure and it's pretty hard to maintain like network connection from for such board uh, changing all uh, the codes inside online. So I would not use computer vision on such board except it's super important to work from super small battery. Okay, let's go a little bit deeper and check how to work with this specific board. The documentation itself doesn't describe the logic very well. There is a series of videos 
pretty good and this series of videos like it's describe how you should work what you should done uh, but when we look at the com documentation actually there is a lot of documentation and the documentation is very overwhelming it's one this one is several kilometers long it has everything a summary of neural networks a summary of hardware development a recommendation on bakery oh, sorry the last one is missing in this documentation uh, the information you need is here but you have to search for it there is no like clear logic how to use this board and since this board is not suitable for most of our projects i was not ready to spend a lot of times setting up all the environments i tried a few times like to prepare a compilation pipeline but no like the automatic uh, compilation pipeline installation didn't work for me and the describe Describe but manual approach also wasn't super effective. Of course, it's possible to go through all these problems. I saw a few issues in on the GitHub. Uh, it, I solve a few problems, but the main idea is that you need to spend a lot of time to set up all these pipelines. It's not the board that will work out of the box. And it's really no. And the general idea, because be, um, beneath all this documentation, it's not how all these boards are working today. Check out the documentation you need to read and get Max seventy eight three zero up and running. A lot of documentation. And a few examples. In Halo, to set up the development and export infrastructure, it's just enough to set up one Docker and like one list of documentation after that is enough. In Rockchip, it's enough to install one pip wheel and a little bit of tweaking if you need to compile everything in C++. In Intel, the code model export from PyTorch is just a several pages and mostly usage of super well-known libraries. Is this board bad? No, of course not. It has super good documentation, it uh, has super low consumption and so on. But it's, in my opinion, it's like a little bit out of date. There are a lot of boards nowadays that has worse documentation, that you need to spend a lot of time, but there are a lot of boards that are better in terms of usability, how easy to run everything. So in my opinion, this board is for completely different tasks than computer vision and for completely different use cases that most of us will do nowadays. Okay, and really let's go briefly through the logic, because uh, through the logic of usage, because maybe it will help someone. And of course, it's, it's one of the good point of this board. First, you need to install AI8X training framework. It's a special version of the framework with its own version of PyTorch. And uh, what can it do? It can modify all the layers that in your neural networks. It has a few of few samples of different neural networks already pre-built. And it uh, has integrated quantization aware training. So basically with this framework, you just can train out of the box models that will be ready for specific these boards. And the second part of uh, 
this logic is AI8X synthesis framework. This one is to prepare your models for the production. It can, it will prepare, first it will export your models in compatible format and prepare a super simple usage code on C language. And the second part, this framework can compile the project. Actually, for the compila compilation will be will go through the bunch of different frameworks, but this framework will uh, is having a few scripts for it and is managing this proce process. So the logic itself is roughly in the line with today's approaches, but the implementation I would rate like three out of ten because of all this complexity. In my opinion, it's much better to have like two Docker files, one Docker file for training and one for uh, exporting. And it's it will solve all the problems. But all this installation part and all this complexity in um, logic of narrative is pretty bad. So thank you for watching. I hope this video will help you. Bye. Go. One. Two. Eleven. Eleven. Three, eleven, eleven.